Hey, what's up everybody? This is Justin with Bad Zero Games, and today I want to do an overview of Citadels. Citadels is a really fun card game for two to seven players where you have some drafting mechanics and you basically build a little city filled with different types of districts. Let's talk about how you win this game, all right? You win by building districts of varying types and they're associated with a color. So yellow would be a noble, blue would be religious, green would be trade, red would be military, and purple are special buildings. Each one of these districts, and I'll probably say buildings more often than I should, but they're districts. Let's just call them districts. And if I say building, you just fill that in with district. They have a gold cost. And you're gonna start out with two gold, right? So everybody, you know, beginning of the game starts two gold and four districts that you can build. On your turn, you can take one of two actions. You can build a district, and only one, and then you can use a character special power. And we'll talk about the characters in just a minute, because that's really a huge component in this game, and one of the things I like most about it. So, if I wanted to build the manor, I'd have to have three gold, but I only start out with two gold. I could build the temple, but the manor is worth more victory points at the end of the game. And the other thing that's important about the district colors is they work with giving some of the characters extra money. And again, I'll talk about the characters in just a minute. So anyway, how do I get more money? On my turn, I can take two gold from the bank and then build one of my districts and then use my character special power. Or I can draw two cards, choose which one I want to keep, keep it, and put the other one underneath at the bottom of the deck. Now, those are the basic rules of the game. First person to build eight districts gets four victory points. Everybody else that gets their eight districts gets two victory points. And if you're able to build a district in every color, you're gonna get three victory points at the end of the game. The other victory points come from the cost in gold of the districts and any special powers that some of them might offer you. Let's talk about the characters because this is where the game gets really, really cool. So, you're gonna draft the characters, meaning depending on the number of players, you're going to discard sort of randomly a character face down, and then sometimes you discard characters face up, unless one of them is the king. Um, he always has to be in play or face down. And then you're gonna basically shuffle the cards, and the first player, the player who is the, the who has the, the king or the crown, um, and in the beginning of the game, you start by giving the oldest player, usually me, unfortunately, uh, this guy. And, you know, a friend of mine, Maida, who is totally awesome, said um, anytime that there's a turn order mechanic in a game, it's pretty important. So being the king, well, let's just say it's good to be the king. Anyway, the characters, they get called out in order. So if you're the king, you're going you're gonna to be responsible for making sure that the game keeps going by calling out the characters in order. And early on, you'll just call them out one and then the person who has one will go, and then two, the person who has two will go. And it's not gonna necessarily be in clockwise order. It could be, you know, sort of all over the table, which is kinda of cool. In any event, the assassin. If you choose the assassin, you can call out another player, and you kill them. And that player loses their turn for that round. So, pretty powerful. Somebody, especially if somebody's winning, because, you know, you can prevent them from going. The thief. The thief allows you to steal somebody else's gold. Um, you can't target the assassin and you can't target the assassin's um, victim because that would just be OP and totally mean. And because the thief already knows who the assassin is, it's an unfair advantage. The magician allows you to exchange your cards with another player. So if you had like one card in your hand or no cards in your hand, um, you can take cards from somebody else, which can be totally awesome. So you wanna have a good poker face in this game because if you're like over there going, oh yes, oh, my cards are awesome, then man, I'm gonna take them from you. The other thing you can do is you can discard cards to the stack underneath and then draw more districts equal to the number of cards you draw. The king, oh, it's good to be the king. The king, as soon as you play the king, if you're not the first player, you take the crown and you become the first player for the next round. Also, you'll see that you receive one gold for each noble or yellow building that you have already built. So you can use this as a way to generate money. And the king, the bishop, the merchant, they all have this ability which gives them gold equal to the number of types of buildings that you have. So again, if you have yellow buildings or if you have noble buildings, you'll get more gold for that on your turn. 
And that's just using the, the power. Because um, again, remember, on your turn, you're going to take one of two actions, which would be either taking gold or taking cards. And then you can build a district, and then you can use your character's power. But you can do the character's power at any time. You could do it at the very beginning, you could do it at the end. So for example, let's say I had the king, and I, I had one manor, right? So I had, I, had one, I had one gold building in play, or yellow, but I had one that I could build. So I build that next one up, and then I take my, I take my extra dollar. So you know you can use it at the end to get more money for your next turn. All right, so the king is good. The bishop. The bishop gets one gold for each blue type of building or each um, religious building that you have in your, in your, in your, or religious, again, see, I call them buildings. They're districts. Uh, district, district, district. Uh, so he gets extra money for districts. And the warlord cannot destroy or um, exchange buildings if you're using the optional diplomatic character. Um, the cool thing about citadels in this particular package is there's all of your basic standard eight characters, but there's a whole nother set of characters that you can shuffle in and randomize to change the game up after you've played it for a while. And so that's why you'll see that this says Warlord Diplomat. Um, the, it's kind of an expansion and it comes with the base game now. In any event, so Bishop prevents uh, his buildings from getting destroyed. The Merchant. The Merchant gets one extra gold for any of their green or trade buildings, and they can take an extra gold after they do an action. So, you know, I can take my two gold, which is my action, and then I can take another gold, and I get gold for each one of these. So if I have a couple of buildings and I'm trying to generate money on a turn, I might want to grab the merchant if I've got trade buildings, right? Makes sense? The architect. Remember at the beginning I told you you can only build one district per turn. The Architect allows you, after you take an action, to draw two extra cards and put both of them into your hand. So normally when you draw cards as an action, you have to put one of them back, you discard one. But this guy, he allows you to take two, and he can build up to three districts in your turn. So if you have five districts and you have the money to build a couple more, this guy could get you over the edge and, and help you win. Uh, consequently, <laughs> the Assassin kills him a lot in games that we play, so, you know, your mileage may vary. And finally, the Warlord. The Warlord gets one gold for each red district that you have built. And at the end of his turn, he can pay the cost minus one of any building in play and destroy it. So if my opponent had the fortress, it costs one, two, three, four, five. I could pay four gold and make him discard this building, which is super powerful, but also super mean. So basically, that's the game. Every round, you're gonna draft different cards and you're gonna pick the card you want. Hopefully, you'll get the card you need. Then you go through them. So the, the king calls out in order, one, two, three, four, and you'll have cards that are buried because they're not always gonna be the same every round. You build all your districts, and then at the end of the game, once somebody has built their eight, you can have multiple people getting to eight buildings or even more, um, especially if you can use the architect, because remember, he can build multiple buildings on the same turn. So you get through that, and then everybody counts up the number of gold on their buildings. And if you were the first person to build all eight, you're gonna get an additional four victory points. This is a really fun game. It changes every time. Um, it's a real crowd pleaser. Like I said, it plays up to seven. It's fun, it's engaging, and it's pretty quick. Um, and you know, there's a, definitely some strategy, and it's fun to like, you know, <laughs> when somebody's assassinating somebody, it's great to see the look on their face when nobody has that card, or when you use the thief and you go to steal from somebody, you know, you're hoping that you picked a merchant because you don't know who has that card, but you know that somebody might, you know, one of your opponents might have a lot of gold or something like that, and you definitely wanna try knocking them down a step. But anyway, that's been Citadels. We have this game in our game library, and we'd love to have you come out and play it. You can check us out at badzerogames.com or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash bad zero games. And I hope to see you out at one of our game days. Have a great day.